Why do we pick a hemoglobin of 7 as the transfusion threshold for hemodynamically stable patients? This number has been looked at a wide variety of populations. It's general critical care patients, trauma patients, patients with GI bleeds who are hemodynamically stable. Because transfusion is not without its own risks, researchers needed to do a study to figure out the differences between patients who were transfused to a hemoglobin of 10 and some other number. Some of those risks you're probably familiar with. Transfusion reaction, risk of infection, transfusion-associated circulatory overload, called TACO. I love that name. So people have agreed it's better to be stingy with blood, but finding what transfusion threshold is really the important thing. Back in the 90s, there was a group called the Trick Investigators, and what they sought to do was compare a heme level of 10 in critically ill patients and 7 to see if there was any difference in outcomes. They didn't find any differences in morbidity and mortality. In fact, the people who got a hemoglobin of 7 did better. However, where did this number seven come from? I was lucky enough to work with one of the principal investigators when I did my fellowship. Before my first rotation with him, I did all the research on blood that I could, and I came to him on the first day of rounds with all my questions. And to his credit, he let me go off and ask him all the questions. And at the end of asking him all the questions saying, why didn't you pick seven? Why didn't you pick six? Why didn't you pick eight? He just chuckled. He said, Haney, we studied the hemoglobin of seven because it's a lucky number. It's as simple as that. And for decades now, we've been using this transfusion cutoff of seven as our number that we titrate to when it easily could have been six or eight. It just goes to show you that not everything in medicine is as evidence-based as you think.